Hi and welcome to East Durham College. Uh, my name is Lee Gardner and I am the course leader for the Public Uniform Services Programme. Uh, thank you very much for your time uh, in attending this briefing session. I hope you find it informative and useful. As we go through the presentation, what I'd like you to consider in the background is what service are you interested in and why? Okay, um, and if we've got uh, questions, then please kind of feel free to get in touch and ask them as we go along. I want to be a police officer. I want to be in the prison service. I want to be a paramedic. I chose to come to East Durham College because the local to me, it's easy to get to, it has great facilities. The Uniform Public Services Programme here at East Durham College prepares our learners for life in service. I feel this course is preparing us for that path as it's given us the values, the morals and the discipline. We start by splitting the uniform services into three cores, the armed services, the emergency services and other services. We do a lot of fitness units and land-based units. A massive part of the course is leadership and teamwork and that's a massive part of the public services and it will help us in real life. So we're out exploring say, the woods or we're doing activities outside. Now I know how to orientate maps, I know how to find my way if I ever get stuck. By us keeping up to date with current affairs and embed those within the programme, we are absolutely preparing our learners for their, for their next steps. The staff at East Durham are completely supportive. The more like people we can like talk to and understand with and get along with a lot better. Because of our experience, it allows us to get the learners out of campus into operational environments and work with some organisations that they would never normally get the opportunity. We went to the police riot training. We do things like observation posts and navigation units and all tie into what service life is like and what skills you'll need. I want to learn as much as I can from college. All the different units that we do have all tied into what I want to do and will help us to get where I want. The course is really flexible. I can do one or two years of study. Which gives me an option to go to university. I think I could definitely use their experience in life to slingshot me through university and into my career. Now that I know what I want to do, it's made it easier to realise that it is achievable. Having proper experience means you know what you're in for when you finish this course. There is still more to come out of public services at East Durham. There's still more opportunities for us to raise our game and we'll definitely be one of the best in the country, or at least that's my aim as course leader. I want to work in the security industry. I want to work in the emergency services. I want to be a Royal Marines Commando. I don't know what I want to do, but I know where I want to start. Okay, so how do we deliver on what you've just seen in the video? Uh, so basically what we do, as you heard in the video, we split uh, the public services into three groups. We have our emergency services, our armed services, uh, and our other services. And the course is designed specifically to prepare candidates uh, for their journey and their lives in service. So the courses that we currently, de currently deliver uh, are at different levels. We have an NCFE level two diploma we have an ncfe level three diploma and we're currently considering and developing uh, a hnc level four so to get on the level two diploma we're looking at three grade threes or above including maths and english at level and the, the level two program is designed for candidates who um are looking at direct entry into a service, okay? So it's all about getting service ready and joining in those kind of lower enlisted ranks. The level three program is slightly different in that it's, uh, it's equivalent to kind of three year levels. Uh, and specifically we're targeting people uh, who have an aspiration to be an officer. So it doesn't matter whether that's a police officer, a fire officer, or an army, air force, or navy, naval officer, uh, we're aiming at that leadership level, okay? Uh, you've finished the Level 3 program. It's a two-year program. you finish that two-year program with a bag of UCAS points, and then you can take those UCAS points and you get to choose what you're going to do with them. You can either use them to put against the entry requirements for some of our public services. So, for example, uh, police require 120 UCAS points. I think the army and the military require about seven minimum of 72 UCAS points to become an officer. 
Um, but you get basically take those UCAS points and decide where you want to place them, whether it's in service or at university. Uh, in the same way that you would do your UCAS points from A levels. And then for some of our uh, uh, more adult learners, we have the HNC. We're considering developing and delivering the HNC level four in public services. And again, this is more of a management qualification. So whereas level two is direct entry, level three is leadership, level four is management. Uh, and the course looks at things like uh, managing people's mental health and well-being, uh, it's project management, uh, it's event management. And it's mainly aimed at kind of 19 plus. So the course itself, so it doesn't matter whether it's a level two course or the level three course, the course itself, I, uh, sorry, at this point I should say that the level three program requires four GCSE grades at four or above, including maths and English, okay? Um, but the course itself, so if we move on then, the course itself, uh, we kind of split into four areas, okay? So the first area is our academic units, and they tend to be done with me as course leader, uh, because I have served for 13 years in the Royal Marines, and I've worked with just about every public service agency that you can think of. So my job is to teach the academic units and tell you uh, and help you guys understand how it applies to the real world of service. So units that we'll, uh, we'll cover, there's uh, an employability unit, there's a unit on equality and diversity, there's a unit on uh, leadership. So again, if we look at the difference in the programs, level two would be teamwork, level three, would be leadership in the first year, and then we try and extend that uh, to things like command in the second year. The second area of the program is the sports and fitness. Now, public services is a very physical job, whether you're being a, a, an ambulance uh, worker, through to firemen, all the way through to uh, our Army, Air Force, and Navy, and we have very strict fitness standards uh, to achieve. So the, we will teach you uh, fitness and nutrition uh, and we will help you get fit. We do fitness testing because we aim to have a start point. So it doesn't matter how fit you are when you come on the course, everybody's on their own journey and everybody has a different level to achieve. So if you're looking at joining the police, you might be aiming for 5.4 on the bleep test. If you want to join the Royal Marines, you're looking at level 11 plus on the bleep test. So everybody's working at a different level and everybody has a different start point. The key point is week by week by week, we need to work on our fitness so that we are improving our fitness in line with the service standards of the service that we want to join. The other big part of uh, teamwork within a public service is sports. So again, we're not particularly interested in if you are, if you are currently uh, sporty, although it does help, what we want you to do is we want to see you have an interest in sport, okay? Um, and every Wednesday afternoon is put aside for sport and physical activity, um, and we expect to see our learners join in with something that is physically uh, challenging and all of the extra benefits that come with sport, that competitive uh, and adventurous spirit. It's probably a good time to talk about our sport and academies here at East Durham. So we've got a football academy, we've got a rugby academy, a boxing, a cricket, and I think we've even got a dancing academy. So it doesn't matter uh, what your interests are. We have lots of organized uh, sport and training that uh, will help you on your journey. For those guys, especially at, uh, well, anybody really, but if we talk specifically at level three, when you put your application in to be an officer, they want to see that you are more than just an individual, more than just a bag of qualifications. So working with the, the sport academy suddenly shows that you have hobbies and interests and that you are mo a more interesting and adventurous person than what is necessarily in your application form. It's a great way to put your uh, application head and shoulders above the rest of people who are applying. Um, the next part of our program is uh, outside of COVID, we try and do outdoor adventurous activities. So again, at level three, 
The first year is based on our land-based unit, so you'll learn land-based navigation via map and compass, and we'll do land-based outdoor adventurous activities. So we will do things like uh, hill walking um, and rambling, we'll do uh, mountain biking, we'll do uh, rock climbing and abseiling, um, and then in the second year we tend to do our water-based so that's uh, whitewater rafting, canoeing, kayak, and paddleboarding. Um, and then in the second year, we finish off with um, uh, a expedition. And basically, we go over into the Lake District and we get lost in the mountains and find our way out and kind of solve problems as we go using all of our adventurous skills that we've learnt over the last two years. Um, the fourth part of our program is work experience. So work experience um, usually requires up to about 88 hours worth of work experience and the college and myself have got some really good connections as you can see on the slide there uh, to lots of uh, local national uh, assets. Uh, some of the work experience that we've done um, over the years are things like we have, uh, so every year the police need to requalify for their public order training, um, but they don't have anybody to play the yobs, so we go and throw bricks and riot um, and, th uh, and have a good time working with the police on their riot training. We've done trips down to Cambridge to visit um, the Police Firearms Museum. The guy that runs that is a former counter-terrorist officer um, and basically talks us through the history of uh, firearms in the UK and the legislation and at the end of that tour he has a simulator uh, where it's basically a video game and he puts a Glock pistol in your hand and you've got to respond to the video you know do you shoot the bad guy or don't and he really puts people under pressure with regards to decision making um, because the police well all of our public services really are always held accountable for the decisions that they make and will you be able to justify your actions in a proper and legal way. Um, so that's um, that's quite good. We've had uh, we've had summer trips. So we I called in a favour uh, from a friend of mine, and we went to Devon for a week uh, in the summer uh, and spent a week working at the Commando Training Centre with the Marines. Um, and we get various guest speakers in. We have various uh, army and navy teams come in to do team building and fitness sessions with us. Um, and all of this is about exposing you guys to the work that our public services do. One of the best ones we had was we had a, um, a fire, the, uh, fire team turn up from the fire brigade. Uh, they got a brand new uh, Lexus from the plant at Nissan, uh, drove it to the college and then showed us how to cut the roof off it. Uh, 20,000 pound mortar, brand new, had literally about seven miles on the clock and they cut the roof off it, okay? Um, so we try and get as much inter uh, interesting and varied work experience as we can. There's um, lots of progression routes. So if we think about where this can take us to, so I've already talked about us planning to deliver the, the level four, um, but we at college also run things like a foundation degree in sports. So if you got to the end of the level three program, so the level two is a progression to the level three. The level three is a progression to the second year, which is your extended program. Once you've done the two years at level three, uh, if we get the level four off the ground, you could continue and do the level four. If you wanted to sidestep but didn't want to go to university just yet, you could do our foundation degree in sports um, or you could go to university um as well uh, some of the learners that we've had be successful we, we've had quite a lot of learners um go to university to do the professional policing degree uh, i had one learner uh, managed to get a place at king's college london to do engineering and she got the navy to pay for her degree so when she finishes her degree she'll be a naval engineering officer uh, which is quite a good move. Um, and obviously, as you would imagine, we get a whole raft of learners joining public services uh, direct entry too. Uh, I had a guy um, finish uh, a level three program and he is now a police uh, youth officer. 
so we've had lots of great success stories uh, with regards to our learners and where they take the programme to their next steps. Obviously, COVID has had a significant impact on the programme and how we deliver it. So if we look at a lot of the practical elements of the unit, lockdown and further restrictions have really kind of hampered us and hindered us. We do have a lot of exceptions because we're uh, to the general rules because we're in a, a site of education. So a lot of the fitness units and sport units where we've had where we've not been on lockdown and we've had access to the facilities, whereas gyms might have been shut, we can still kind of uh, progress and do those uh, with safe control measures in place but one of the big things that we've sacrificed uh, because of covid has been the outdoor uh, adventurous activities what we're hoping is that with the um, the prevalence of the test and trace increasing and more tests being put out and now the vaccination program being so successful we're hoping that the country's risk threshold will lower to the point where we get back to, uh, as a country, we get back to normal. And those restrictions, when they're lifted, will be the key that unlocks us going back to doing those outdoor and ad adventurous activities and more of the trips and visits. Uh, because again, a lot of the people who we would normally visit uh, are operational. So for example, if I booked a trip on board a battleship, um, at the minute, they won't host us because if we infect the ship, then that's a whole national asset that is that is out of action. So as the vaccination process and the test and trace process uh, becomes uh, more widespread, we're hoping that lockdown restrictions will be released as the country becomes safer and most of those opportunities will uh, return to us so that in the new academic year, we can continue with the course as I've just described. Every great journey starts with a single step. So here at East Down College, we say, take that step and go. Go. Just two simple letters, right? Wrong. It all starts with go. Go opens doors. Go becomes now. And now becomes how. And how becomes wow. Smart, go like you're never gonna look back. Go find what makes you you. Explore what makes you different. Experience a world that you never knew existed. Fulfill your dreams and find your you. Meet the people that will make a difference to you and those you make a difference to as well. Go see the path ahead. Live the life you want to live. Do everything you can do. Go to East Durham College. So that concludes my briefing on the Public Uniform Services Program here at East Durham College. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed the show. I hope it's been informative for you. I hope it's managed to answer most of your questions and concerns about the program. Um, remember, as we're going through, if, if you have any further questions, then my email is on the slide. It's lee.gardner at eastdurham.ac. Dot UK. I'm more than happy for you to email me um, and I'll get back to you with an answer um, as soon as I can. Um, if you do have questions while we're on the presentation, while we're on now, please feel free to ask them and we'll see what we can do to, uh, to kind of uh, to give you the information that you require. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it.